everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Happy to meet you again in our uh, monthly webinar. Uh, my, our topic today is, uh, will be divided also in two, two lectures. This is the first lecture. This, is, this will be the major one. The other one will be, will be complementary to the current one. Besides that, uh, I, I will delay my case discussion to the next lecture. Next one. So, the orbit is very important in the FRC, in the RCR exam regarding the regard to the all sequelae that drove uh, uh, the inflammation. The, uh, the tumors, every day we meet a case with orbit problem either in the uh, ER, in the, the, the radiology department, at least, at least in, the, in, in any in, in the, in the large hospital or even the GDH. At least. So, so you be, you will meet you you meet usually the radiology department has at least one to two orbital cases every day, and in these cases the findings in these cases usually uh, revealed uh, revealed something so, something not normal. Okay, if you if you are checking. CT, CT orbit or MRI orbit, you have to take care because everything that problem can come from everything in the orbit. And you have to uh, prepare your checklist well because if you didn't review the checklist well, you will miss something. You may miss something, okay? Thank you. Let's start. The anatomy, the lens cataract the sclera vitreous chamber this is not so important for for the radiology unless there is a hemorrhage or which is present with changes of the changes of the um, density or the intensity the optic nerve the choroid and the retina the ciliary body the insertion of the of the lens regard in lens dislocation okay regarding the anatomy you know the anatomy, the bony, the bony anatomy of the orbit is very important because the orbit is considered as uh, as a transit transit point between the the middle cranial fossa and the anterior cranial fossa. The nerves, like the branches of the trigeminal nerve, comes the the V two comes through the uh, inferior orbital foramen, inferior. Um, infer, uh, infer, uh, uh, infra or, uh, inferior orbital forming. So these these uh, uh, these stru the structure the, the orbital structure the bony structures is very is very critical in it, it is beside the cavernous sinus. So the infection in the orbit, the tumors in the orbit and around the orbit and even away from the orbit, it can be it can it can be transmitted trans 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 Trans, uh, transferred and t t t can be uh, uh, transmitted from the uh, middle cranial fossa or even the anterior cranial fossa to the to uh, or outside uh, the brain. Okay. We have the roof frontal bone and the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. The med immediately lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, frontal process of the maxilla, ethmoid, and the lacrimal bones. I mean about the which is thinny. So in the sinusitis, invasive sinusitis, um, or um, progressive sinusitis could be associated with invasion of the lamina vibratia and orbital problems. The floor, the maxillary, palatine, and zygomatic bones, lateral greater wing of sphenoid bone and zygomatic bone, which, which is the strongest of the four walls. Here it is the, the, uh, the superior orbital fissure, the optic canal, the inferior orbital fissure, which I told you that I, I by mistake called it from an inferior orbital fissure, it is the site where the maxillary nerve comes to the the the, 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 the maxillary nerve, the branch V2 of the trigeminal nerve, which has a crucial role in the perineural spread in head and neck malignancies. And the, uh, the here it is the, this the infraorbital canal where the maxillary branch of the V2 the V2 uh, bus. Okay. It uh, comes to to through the infer, uh, inferior orbital fissure to reach to the tergo palatine 
بص اوكي other anatomical structure the lacrimal gland inflammation of the lacrimal gland tumors of the lacrimal gland lymphoma of the lacrimal glands the muscles thyroid acropathy thyroid 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 orbitopathy and the the the, the pseudo tumors all of these all of these structures are source of a common source not it is not uncommon to be to see it in the in the in normal practice it is in the mri the orbital contains a fluid so it is low in the t1 and the high signal in the t2 otherwise otherwise any other thing any other signal any other signal in the orbit should be considered as a pathology in the orbit you have to build up your checklist the ocular globe the optic nerve discoonal intraconal structure or extraconal or extra orbital in the bone itself okay you know the cone the cone will are determined by the here it is the muscles inside the muscles intraconal outside the muscles is extraconal okay differential diagnosis of orbital lesions the ocular globe in the adults melanoma mets lymphoma in the children retinoblastoma first thing to be said then after many steps say the other things the mimics persistent fetal vasculature coots disease and the choroidal hemangioma the optic nerve sheath in the adults optic nerve sheath meningioma in the children optic nerve glioma intra and extra coronal compartment cavernous malformation typical and the atypical the lymphoma meets benign and the malignant tumors of the lacrimal glands and the peripheral nerve sheath tumor and the children not do my sarcoma then after many steps we can say leukemia lymphoma meets the mimics the dermoid cyst and the vascular malformation like hemangioma like that orbital cellulitis all of these will be explained in details today and the next lecture the extra orbital the benign and the malignant tumors of the baronism baronism sinus and which invade the tumor and sometimes if there is inflammation in this region can lead to subperiosteal subperiosteal abscess which is common and uh, one of the most common misinterpreted findings around the orbit okay in the children dermoid cyst leukemia and lymphoma fibrous dysplasia fibrous dysplasia and the histiocytic disease either uh, uh, that are, because there is histiocytic and non histiocytic uh, uh, cell lung lung cell histocytoma okay first the first pathology is the, the uveal melanoma melanoma is is a disease which comes everywhere in a very old region and it emits everywhere everywhere you can expect the melanoma the good sign in the melanoma that in the ct it is a bit hyper dense so it is it is bit characteristic it is not exclusive but bit characteristic and in the mri it is high in t1 and low t2 high t1 because of the fat the, the structures which consider as very cursors for the fat and in the t2 because in the t2 it is low signal and this also differentiate the melanoma from other tumors because the common rule of the tumor that it is low in t1 and the high t2 but in the melanoma it is high in t1 and low in t2 so it is bit characteristic okay according to the site that the, the prognosis is different is different the choroid 90% 7% for the ciliary body and the 3% in the iris which has a good prognosis in the uveal melanoma 40 to 60 years old patient single and unilateral not bilateral like the retroblastoma in many of the cases which is the most common tumor tumor in the pediatric group outer layers clinic depends on the location can produce retinal detachment ocular and the extra ocular growth and the diagnosis by ophthalmoscope and the in the mri as we mentioned this melanoma is high in the t1 and hypo in the t2 there is the sub some types melanotic and the amelanotic okay
Here are examples hypertense in the melan the melanoma in hypertense. Just let me use the the laser. Okay, it is hypertense. Hypertense. On the other hand, in the MRI, we'll find it. It is in the T2 hypertense, but here it is relative, relative hyperintense. Okay. Low signal in the T2. Compare when you compare compare to the muscles. This is uh, our uh, parameter to say high or low signal compared to the muscle. This is hyperintense. Compared to the muscle, this is high bone tense. Okay. The ocular mits, odd, odd mits, very rare mits. Not all the tumors can reach to the orbit. It is mainly, mainly affects the choroid. I think you will not hear other names except these names lung, breast, kidney. It starts with visual problems, okay? The retinoblastoma. It's the most common intraocular malignancy in the pediatric age. Leukocoria, all these differential will be delayed to the next lecture. I will include most of the dif important differential for the FRCR exams in the next lecture because the orbit, orbital differential is very important. Leukocoria, white eye, white eye, vision loss. Posterior wall of the retina, settled on the posterior wall of the retina. And third, third of the cases are bilateral. Called bilateral when, in, when associated with binary plastoma. Growth pattern endophytic, intravitral or exophytic, subretinal or diffuse. Intraocular lesion in the posterior pool with calcification. So it is hyper, hyper dense, bit hyper dense. And don't forget calcifications. Very important. The calcification are very important. Dissemination through the, the optic nerve. We mentioned in the in the start that the orbit is very dangerous region. It is the transit point. As you were, it is like London and like Dubai. Everything wanted to come in and out can can pass through the orbit. And when it comes to the orbit, it can go anywhere. It is the Retinoblastoma, retinoblastoma bilateral, and the, when you find the retinoblastoma, you have to check the bineal, bineal region. Okay. Next is optic nerve glioma. The glioma are could be part of the syndrome. Okay. But if this uh, the in the young age, it is called glioma, and the type in the young age is low grade, but in the old age, it is high. Great. This is characterized by fusiform enlargement of the optic nerve with variable posterior optic pathway involvement. Characteristic kinking and the buckling of the cranial nerve too. Moderate to avid tumor enhancement common in adults, sporadic pediatric cases. Glioma associated with NF1 may have little enhancement. Tortuosity of the optic nerve may Sit with development of the glioma in NF1. Glioma NF1. Meningioma NF2. I will try to gather the syndromes associated with orbital pathology in the next lecture. NF1 associated with orbitofascia, orbitofacial, and intracranial findings. Ophthalmus, plexiform neurofibroma, sphenoid dysplasia. dysplasia. It is high in T2 and flare C lesions in deep white matter, basal ganglia, thalamus, brainstem, cerebellum, juvenile biolocytic astrocytoma, diffuse brainstem glioma, and ganglion glioma. It is, all of this has better prognosis compared to the other. There is a fusiform enlargement of the optic nerve, fusiform enlargement of the optic nerve with avid contrast enhancement. There is the in the in the children you will have you will have the low grade types uh, biolocytic astrocytoma neurofibromatosis and could, more common to be bilateral in the adults this is rare but high grade fatal 
optic nerve sheath meningioma is more common in women 40 to 50 years old progressive and the painless vision loss atrophy of the optic nerve it's primary or orbital extension of the intracranial meningioma no biopsy required characteristic for image ct and the mri with endovenous contrast is important for diagnosis and extension don't forget meningioma in the optic nerve the tram track sign if it extends from the brain or any other structures don't forget to check the bone the margins of the orbit okay in the optic nerve meningioma there is enhancing mass surrounding the optic nerve often with calcifications tubular with uncalated or fusiform enlargement of the optic nerve which is complex tram track appearance due to enhancement calcifications of the nerve sheath surrounding the optic nerve. Coronal MRI is the best, the best sequence, the most, the best access to demonstrate the circumferential perineural location, and they may have pre-optic cyst. The cyst you can find the cyst, which means that there is CSF within the retrobulbar optic nerve sheath. Here are the you can find here is meningioma, dural tail, avid homogeneous enhancement. But here, there is extension along the optic nerve, and here it is the T presentation. Okay. Next is idiopathic orbital inflammatory disease, orbital pseudo tumor. This non specific process. In the imaging, in, the, in in such a cases, you will find that the patient comes with severe pain. Severe pain. And that's it, proptosis with severe pain. Okay. So, it's called, uh, what's called IgG4 related. And it can, it can come and involve everything in the muscles. The orbital, the other orbital structure can involve every everywhere. But if I speak I speak about the muscles and the important the important point in the muscles, I will tell you that it, it doesn't spare the tendon like the thyroid orbitopathy. I, this will be explained in details later. But in thyroid orbitopathy, the characteristic finding is not involving the tendons of the muscles and have the uh, the uh, what's called uh, clockwise clockwise involve involvement okay but on the other hand here no role in the idiopathic orbital inflammatory disease the pseudo orbital pseudo tumor and also it doesn't spare the tendons on the other hand the main differential the other main differential is the lymphoma in the bust Nobody can tell you the, 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 dif the, dif the difference between both of them. Some, some authors spoke about the degree of enhancement, but recently they are speaking about the level of the ADC. It is not so trusted in the diffusion. The diffusion, the ADC in lymphoma is higher than, higher, is, low, is lower than the, the ADC is lower than the Orbital, orbital inflammatory disease. So it means it is more dark. Okay. So it is inf infiltrative or mass-like enhancing, enhancing soft tissue involving any area of the orbit. Intracranial space may show diffuse infiltration or more discrete regular mass. Optic perineuritis from form show ragged edematous enlargement of the optic nerve sheath. Apical form has infiltration of orbital apex. And the cranial nerve two. Look for simultaneous extraocular muscle, lacrimal, and the scleral involvement. Everywhere is a target. Here it is. Can you tell me where is the tumor? Not where is that? Where is that? This everything is involved muscles, optic nerve, even extracranial, lacrimal gland. Everything, everything is involved. Okay. 